Fredericksburg, Virginia saw a new type of war in 1862 and a new type of warfare. Following the Battle of Antietam in September of 1862, Abraham Lincoln issued the Preliminary Emancipation Proclamation and he was getting ready to sign the Emancipation itself on January 1st, 1863. If he was going to do that, he was going to have to do it from a position of strength, which relied exclusively on military victory. It was vital that his armies press forward at once in the fall and early winter of 1862. Where generals hesitated, generals were sacked. Here in the East, General George B. McClellan was one of the slowest of them all. In November, he was replaced by General Ambrose Everett Burnside, one of the most aggressive, assertive officers in the Army of the Potomac at the time. Once he was put in command, he decided to bring his army directly to Fredericksburg. Relying on speed and surprise, he was hoping to be able to cross the Rappahannock River and seize the city of Fredericksburg before the Confederates could react and block him on the road to Richmond. He thought his plan out pretty well, even to the point where he ordered up pontoon bridge material to be waiting for him here so that he could cross the river without missing a beat. When he got the approval of the president, he was marching within 24 hours. Two days later, he showed up here at Fredericksburg and caught the Confederates entirely off guard. There weren't a thousand Confederates anywhere near this city to stop Burnside from crossing. Despite the fact that Burnside had 135,000 troops congregating on the Rappahannock River, he was unable to get across the river itself. The army had showed up, but their bridges had not. One of the great bureaucratic missteps or misfires of the war had occurred. It took 10 days to find the pontoons and send them to Burnside. By the time the bridges arrived, this entire scene had changed. Robert E. Lee and 78,000 Confederates were on the other side of the river waiting for Burnside. The plan that Burnside had crafted had fallen apart. But it was still absolutely vital for the President that Burnside go forward and gain victory at any cost. In December, Burnside forced his way across the Rappahannock. Laying bridges under fire on December 11th, he seized the city. December 12th, he filled the city and the floodplain below with 100 plus thousand troops. On December 13th, he launched a series of futile, disastrous attacks against the Confederates fortified on Marie's Heights. The battle ended with tremendous disaster for the Union Army. They had lost 13,000 men here at Fredericksburg and had nothing to show for their efforts. The Confederates, safely ensconced in the hills outside of the city, lost only about 4,000 to 5,000 troops tops. The Battle of Fredericksburg was one of the true milestones of the American Civil War. While it didn't exactly change the outcome of the war, Abraham Lincoln, for example, did sign the Emancipation Proclamation despite the defeat. The war itself was changing. Uh, the unprecedented nature of the combat downtown, bombarding a city, forcing their way across the river under fire, all these things had changed. Fighting behind a stone wall had become the genesis for fighting under cover or trench warfare. In the bigger picture, the Union Army, their morale had all but collapsed following this battle. Many deserted in the aftermath of Fredericksburg, but those who stayed had a brand new resolve that this war was not going to be easy and it was not going to be short. It was that resolve that would drive them on, press them towards Gettysburg and towards victory. For the Confederates, many of them thought that Fredericksburg was marking the beginning of the end. Uh, they had high hopes that Southern independence would become a reality in the near future.